Hi and welcome to the last part of the Indo Navigation tutorial. Um, thank you so much for your positive support and all your feedback in the comments. And this time I'll refactor it a little bit more and did something for the path visualization and just added a different navigation visualization. In this this time it's not a line, it's an arrow. And we'll dive into that in a few minutes. Um, first of all, I'll just wanted to say thank you because one of you just mentioned that there was an error in the code from the last time. There was a not missing for the camera frame received, and the QR code tracking is not has not worked. I already fixed that and I refactored the navigation controller, so it's now much simpler and easier for you to maintain because there is no only the target position and the calculated path which will be calculated in the update method when a target position is set and based on that nav mesh path everything from uh, visualization and so on can be done. The Indo navigation object has now the switch path visualization object and the indicator the navigation controller as you see here is much simpler so I just dragged out the navigation rend line renderer into a separate object and this separate object will now handle everything regarding the path line visualization. It has its own object and its own line renderer so everything is a little bit much a little bit more separated now. Speaking of the path line visualization there is a mono behavior now which has a link to the navigation controller, the line renderer which is an on the same object and the slider for the navigation y offset and a path and the calculated path offset. The update method does nothing special, it's just getting the calculated path, adding an offset, adding the line offset based on the slider in our debug menu and set the line renderer positions. I added the add offset to path to start the path visualization on the height the, of the smartphone just because lots of the errors mentioned in the comments were that the line is not visible and it's under the geometry so I just thought of it adding it to the in initial height would be much more intuitive for you guys and you can set the line Y position oh I just saw that the toggle line visibility method is not needed here anymore let's just delete it and everything else should work um, similar to the last implementation. Well, let's see, the navigation line render is here and the next type of visualization is just a simple arrow and it has a rotation constraint for the AR camera which is active and uh, works on all three axes as you can see here in the constraint settings and there is its own object the path arrow visualization script which will take care of our arrow orientation that is always in front of the camera and points toward the next point of the path uh, you can't see it here properly because it's within the wall so it will still be not visible if you're hitting wall but that's basically not a problem I have all the transforms and all the values here for you just feel free to pause the video and rebuild it you can also just um, pull everything from the github repo it's updated already and feel free to experiment adding your own visualizations and give me feedback in the comments what, what you tried and what have you done for the path visualization um, the path error visual visualization script works similar to the line visualization, navigation controller, the arrow object, and the Y offset slider. The only thing that's different is the move on distance, which will calculate the distance to the next point before the arrow is orientated to the next point of the path. Um, let's look at the script. It's a link to the navigation controller, the arrow object, the navigation Y offset slider in our debug settings, and the move on distance and a few local variables for saving the path, the current distance path offset and the next navigation point. I think the update method is pretty clear. Navigation controller gets the path, 
we're adding the offset to the path, selecting the new navigation point. The path is already at our current Y position and we're just checking if the path has more points than three. If that's not the case, we'll just add the target position, but I'm and when the next point is within the distance, we'll just make the arrow point towards it. And if it's not within the distance, it will point directly to our finished object, which is the navigation controller target position. I guess we can change it here and replace it. And on the other hand, there is no else needed here and no if at all. So we'll just selecting the next point within our move on distance. If, the, if there is no point, I'll let the arrow point directly to the target position. Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry for the confusion. So just to walk through the script of the switch path, switch path visualization, I added all the different visualization scripts. And on start, I'll have an active visualization object which will point to the path line visualization at start. And for the next line visualization, when clicking the button, I'll just um, increment the local counter and then select the next path line or line visualization. In this case, if it's one, it's the arrow line. Every other case is the path line. Just feel free to add how to incre increment the counter and add your own visualizations here. I know that there are more ways to do this, like some kind of list or some, I don't know how to put it here, some kind of, of data structure which will manage your visualizations. I'll just try to keep it simple to have everyone, to give everyone the possibility to extend it by their own needs. And within our switch pairs, path visualization, there is now the toggle visual visibility method, which will be linked to our toggle nav visibility button, which is in the line options panel. And we can see here that the on click method is at the indoor navigation object now where the switch path visualization script is located. And the same goes for the switch navigation visualization button, which will just switch to our next line visualization on click. The navigation target dropdown is still the same, target handler, and I guess that's it for the new stuff. We're selecting a target. We can change the Y position of our navigation visualization. The QR code reading is fixed now. The arrow object is created, the constraint settings are right, it's active, and every three axes are locked. Navigation line render, everything is set. The line is set correctly, the indicator has the AR camera transform position constraint, there is a navigation controller here, and at the indoor navigation is the switch path visualization script. With the line render and the arrow indicator object, yeah, well, that looks good. And in the AR application settings, oh, I forgot about that. There is a different script now for keeping the screen alive when starting the application. Um, this will prevent the smart from, from going into, um, from switching off the display when a different amount of time is uh, over. Some may have, some people may have this setting active on their smartphones. So it's just a convenience method, which was actually in the navigation controller before, but when separating concerns, it makes sense that this is in a, its own mono behavior in its own script. Well, I guess that's it. We can also try it within the editor. I just will adjust the camera accordingly so we can check the functionality here. Everything is set up, saving the scene and deactivate the error indicator so that it's not visible from start. Fine, click on play and waiting for it to start. Um, 
selecting a target as you can see the line is generated it's on the it's on our level on our current level we can switch the height by the um, slider and when we can also switch it on switch it off and switch the navigation visualization here and the arrow is now not visible because it's behind the wall uh, but as soon as we turn the camera and we'll do that in a, in a second we'll see the arrow pointing to the next point of the calculated path selecting the AR session origin rotating around the y-axis and as soon as we're out of the wall the arrow shows the direction which we should walk to the line is visible as well and I'll just put it up here no I guess it's when when we're putting down it's, it's a little bit easier to see and now we're moving towards our target following the arrow sometimes the move on distance is a little bit too less so the arrow will point to the um, path point but that's not really a problem so as soon as we're close enough the arrow will switch to the next point here we go and rotating the camera again, switching the viewport onto the path into the hallway. Let's check with our line. Okay, everything looks good. And moving on towards a target. And the arrow is adjusting as we want it. And as soon as we're close enough to a finish point, the arrow will still point here. And just to show you the working version of this, I've just installed the app on my smartphone, turned around in the living room, selected and target. Here is the line. I can adjust the line height with the slider in the debug options. Everything's working fine. And back on the line options, oops, the line options here, switch navigation, visualization, the arrow will now point towards our goal, which is the main entrance here. And as long as we're following, it will point us into the right direction. And we're basically here. It will turn point up a little bit because the, the target is a little bit in the air. And if I turn around, the arrow will stay in my viewport, but will tell me to turn around because the main target is behind me. So the navigation works too. And I would say that this prototype or this proof of concept is now finished and it's open for you now to experiment with it and create something. So thank you again for watching, for your positive feedback, for your questions and everything else. Um, just um, leave me a few comments down there um, what you think about the project, if there is something that you really, really want to see. and maybe you're not able to implement yourself also post me some problems don't be afraid to go to github to the github repository uh, post some issues if something's not working um, i'll try to answer as fast as possible and if you have suggestions for the next video please feel free to do that in my mind is now something like zebra crossing like the qr code reading do it in a more efficient way on android as well as on, on other platforms and yes, we'll see. I'll try to post the video every month. Maybe in September the next video will be. I hope that in September I'll be able to upload the next video. So thanks again and hope to see you soon. Bye.